Um, yeah, so um, hi everyone. Uh, hi again. I, uh, my name is Rafid. I'm a senior software engineer within AWS and um, today I'll be talking about uh, the uh, Vision Transformer, which is one of the interesting paper that I've been recently working with. And um, it's an interesting work. I mean, it's not very new, so it has been almost two years, but it's interesting to walk through because it's um, the application. It's, it's, I would say maybe it's one of the very successful applications of the um, transformers on the application of computer vision. So I will, uh, I will open the paper and then I can walk you through it quickly, just give you an overview about it. And then I can show you some quick demo and then maybe we could, you know, have some discussions, some, um, some questions. Uh, I see someone on the chat saying, not hearing over here, did, did the voice change? Uh, are others having issue as well? Okay, so yeah, so people people are hearing me. I'm I'm f afraid it might be a problem on your side, um, Risha Rish, if I pronounce your username correctly. Apologies if not. So maybe check the audio and see what's going on. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, the paper the paper that I am going to talk through, uh, you know, today is. Um, just trying to open it on my side here. So this is the paper that I'll walk through, and it's the it's an interesting title. Images worth sixteen by sixteen words, and we will see you know what the idea behind this interesting title is. But before that, I want to actually uh, just quickly go through some of the. Uh, the discussion I've had, you know, a couple of couple of months back about the transformer, because this is actually building on the transformer architecture. So it's essential that you know. I mean, many of you might already know about it. You know, it's all over the news now. So, but it's it it, it doesn't harm to just quickly um, review the architecture. Um, so you know, the transformer is the attention is all you need paper, and it came in. Uh, 2017 and the architecture is you know this architecture you might have seen it in many places so the uh, the architecture is that you have basic idea is that you have an encoder and then you have the decoder here and I would say the you know one of the most powerful thing probably what made it so you know very powerful is the attention mechanism so you know the idea is that you get a you know a source message or a source sentence, or a source set of tokens, and then you encode it into some hidden representation, and then you use the decoder to do generate something else. So, if you know the typical scenario for using the transform transformer is machine neural machine translation. So you have a sentence in French, and you want to translate it to English, for example, and uh, you know you encode the a French statement using the encoder and then you decode it into English and so on and then you know that's that's all I you know I, I you know I need to refresh memory on because you know it's it's like a whole topic to go through the architecture and you know the multi-head attention the self-attention and all these things but that's all we need for now so I want to actually you know after that I don't want to jump straight into the idea about the other paper which is the attention the attention uh, sorry images were 16 by 16 words before that i just want to show you a quick paper which is the bird paper so um the uh, bird is also an interesting model from google it came in 2019 um so and the reason why I want to show you just some application, while it seems completely unrelated, is that I want to show you the basic idea of uh, how you might be using a transformer for you know variety of applications. So you can see in this paper, what they try to do is that they get the uh, they they build the model using a transformer and they use the encoder part only. So essentially. 
this part and before I just go ahead I just want to make sure I have um, you know just checking to see whether there's any question uh, oh oh you know I'm really apologize for that uh, I thought I was sharing my screen so yes um, um, entire screen Uh, see my screen now? Awesome. Yeah, apologies for that. Uh, I have the OBS for recording, but, uh, you know, I thought I'm already sharing my screen. Um, yeah, so uh, then I, I'll just go back quickly then. So, you know, that's the... Uh, and let, let me know if, if, the, if it's not clear, to, it's not easy to see the text. I can then zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, so I, I was I was briefly talking about the transformer architecture and talking about the encoder and the decoder and how you know you, you know essentially you have like multiple encoder stick. You can see this is n multiplied by each encoder essentially. So you might want to have like six encoder layer and six decoder layer, or if you can have twelve by twelve, depending on how you know how many parameters you want your model to be and accordingly how powerful your model is and that you must have you know seen this in many papers and you know everyone's talking about transformer these days so i don't want to go through uh you know spend too much time on this um but i want to point out that depending on your application you might want to use either the encoder or the decoder or both of them so for example think about sentiment analysis you know you're looking at amazon customer reviews and you want to see whether it's a negative or positive then you really just want to understand the text and then based on that generate whether it's negative or positive and thus you need only the encoder on the other hand think about generation so think about gpt for example how you know you generate text for you or you know and that's kind of like it uses a decoder. That's why ChatGPT, which is based on the GPT model, is a decoder-only transformer. Or obviously, in other cases, you might want to use both of them. So a typical example is the neural machine translation, because you have the encoder taking a source statement and then generating a target statement. So that's all we need to go through about the transformer. And then before I actually jump into the, uh, uh, you know, the vision transformer i want to just quickly take an application take as an application the burp model and the reason i'm taking this is that it's also an encoder and we will see later that the transformer model is uh, you know an encoder trans uh, sorry the vision transformer is an encoder only um, transformer and the idea of the bird the burp model is that they take massive model and then they do they do two things in the pre-training they mask some of the input statements and then try to guess the word. So imagine, for example, you could say the student went to there and then, you know, empty, empty word. And then you could guess, well, it could be the school. So they take massive, massive corpus from online and they try to teach the model. And you can see it's only, it's just encoder because you're not actually generating anything. And then they try to use, um, you know, the other task in the pre-training is the next sentence prediction. So they take they take two sentences and then try to teach the model whether they make sense that they come one of them come after the other one. So I think they have an example here somewhere where I'm uh, just trying to see what that looks like. Um, Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they don't have the examples here. But basically, for example, you you could say, you know, I went outside. The weather was good. The weather was, or the weather was beautiful. The statement "the weather was beautiful" does make sense to come after the statement "I went outside." But you could say, I went outside. The company was doing well. You know, that's there's no relation. And then you try to use the model. You give it a statement that you know, do follow after each other and other that do not follow after each other and then try to teach it. And again, that's that's all I need to go through. You know, obviously you can try try to experiment with BERT model, but 
I want to now jump into the other paper, which is the main topic of this discussion, which is the, um, you know, discussion about how to use a transformer in computer vision applications. So the uh, the challenge that comes here, you know, if you remember, like when we're talking now about the bird, for example, all you have is say a statement compromised of ten words, twenty words, or even a hundred words. That's going to be easy to insert into a transformer encoder and then do whatever you want to do with it. The challenge that comes with computer vision is that an image is essentially like considered a massive input, let's say. So for example, if you imagine, I'll just quickly check whether there's any question. Okay. So imagine, for example, if you have simply a an image which is 256 by 256 and then that's going to be 65 kilobyte essentially of pixels now if you compare that if you try to use that within a transformer model that's like that's considered huge that's as if you are essential i don't know whether that's considered to be like a size of a book or you know maybe if you think about you know uh, average page containing i don't know i think 250 uh, words per page that's almost a book essentially you're trying to insert a whole book into the equivalent of a whole book as you know just for a single image and that's by the way is like as you know it's considered a very small computer a uh, very small image for you know based on our the human standards so the the problem is that in, in the transformer architecture you have you know when we talked about the attention mechanism here the multi-head attention essentially you have every single um word attending to every single other word so you know that's what make a transformer uh, model powerful so when you say for example um i you know i visited my friend at his place then you know that the his belongs to friend because that's essentially well i mean the model will know because that's the idea of the attention model is that it it knows how to relate words with each other and the idea is that everything every word is going to attend to every single other word so in this case i have in this simple statement i have one two three four five six seven eight i have eight words which means i have eight by eight uh, and that's like 60, 64 attentions essentially um in total but if you think about an image which is um 65k then essentially you end up having 65 by you know 65k by 65k and that's like is is that like four gigabyte? Yeah, that's four gigabyte, and that's just a single image. And that's why it, it was a bit little bit challenging to come up with you know to employ a transformer with computer vision. And for a long time, uh, computer vision continued to use CNNs for doing you know image classification, clustering, or whatever. Now in this paper, these uh, the authors which are from uh, Google and they come up with an interesting idea and then essentially they want to convert an image into a set of patches so the idea is that just like as a, a statement is essentially a set of words they want to com to capture an image and they want to convert it into a set of patches which makes it reasonable to insert into a transformer so how do they do that and this bring us, brings us to the part about, you know, 16 by 16 words. So, um, essentially they divide an image into a patches of 16 by 16 pixels. And then each 16 by 16 pixel is essentially at 20, 256 pixels um, in total. And then they consider each one of these is a patch or more like a token that, you know, if you, if you check in this, this model in this uh, diagram here, let's just make that a little bit bigger. You can see that essentially they are, you know, they take this image and then they divide it into nine patches and then they treat each patch essentially as a token. And 
they take, you know, the idea now is that, you know, they have the patches and in this case, let's assume it's 16 by 16. Obviously you can play with the patch and they provide multiple models. So let's assume it's 16 by 16, then it is, then it, you, you end up with a 256 uh, pixels in each patch. And then the idea is that you want to convert each patch into an, the equivalent of an embedding. So just like how, you know, with image, sorry, with NLP, you end up converting, I mean, obviously the model cannot really understand language as it is. So you end up converting, converting each token into say, an embedding of 50, uh, 5 to 12 dimensions or, uh, you know, want uh, 1024 dimensions, etc. depending on how large you want your model is. So their, uh, their end goal is to convert uh, these patches into essentially the equivalent of an embedding. So what they do is that they take these patches and then they project them through a linear projection and then essentially they end up with the equivalent of a statement. And then after that, they apply the positional encoding that's from the transformer you know because the the model um you know going back to our example here you know the model need to be able to know that i is the first word visited is the second word and so on so similarly here you want you want the model to know the relative positioning of each patch in the image so you add those uh, embedding here, sorry, those positional, positional embedding. And then you add everything to the encoder, transformer encoder. And then that's essentially your model. And this is, you know, if you recall from the other paper, that's essentially from the Vazwani et al. paper. Uh, that's the encoder. And then that's about it. So the model is surprisingly simple. Um, yet it's very powerful but the author do caution that uh, do mention that um, initially you know what the, what made the model successful let me just uh, so I initially they pointed out that uh, when when they trained the model on mid-sized data set they didn't manage to get great result and what they found is that it lacks some of the inductive biases that you know you, they got from the cnn but things change dramatically when they train the model on large data sets and they were able to essentially you know have um that's one of their uh, selling point is that they ended up beating the well not by far but beating the existing model like resnet for example even though they took substantially less time to train the model so if you look through the paper you will see the table toward the end where um i hope i can find it now right so you can see that you know these are the models and you know they compare it to uh, you know a previous model that uses resnet and that required 9.9k tpu days versus for example the largest model from this paper is just 2.5k and if you go to the just the large one is like 0.6k days so the model is um, substantially smaller than the one based on CNNs, yet it's actually achieving a SOTA. So you can see here that, you know, on the different data set they tried, they achieved better performance. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the main idea. Obviously, you know, there's like a lot of uh, experiments. You can go through them later. I don't think we need to go through all of them. Um, but essentially, you know, it's just, uh, in summary, this is what you what you care about, that you know it's a achieving better results. Let's see if there's a, any question. Um, um, yeah, I see this a um, uh, good question here. Uh, I was actually also asking me the same, asking myself the same question. I mean, I I I think I don't think they have like you know any clear measure. Essentially, what they considered a mid. Uh, just going back to you know a mid-sized database, they consider the image net for example a mid-sized. But when they talk about sufficient, what they define as large data set is something like between fourteen million and three hundred million. So there isn't actually any, any like a standard definition of what's considered mid. These things just essentially end up 
I end up kind of like becoming a convention. So for example, these days, you know, what they consider 300 million to be large data set, in a like couple of years might start to be considered a mid-sized mid data, data set. But essentially what they define in this paper as the large data set is 14 million to 300 million. These are the data set that they try to train on. And um, so one of the, uh, one of the, the other interesting result is that because you have uh, the attention mechanism, um, in theory, you end up with better results than the CNN because every single patch could actually attend to every single other patch in the image. So in theory, you should be able to achieve better results. And I think this is actually the, the reality, not just the theory, um, because it's just becoming the but I, I feel I don't have like, you know, I didn't make a study, but I feel it's just becoming the standard nowadays to use a transformer for uh, encoding images. Um, yeah, so um, let's see uh, whether there's anything else I could talk about in the paper here or I could do some, uh, some demo. Um, yeah, obviously, I, I think I mentioned that you can play with the patch size. So you could make it, you know, if you, you, you might want to do a smaller patch sizes or a larger, you know, the result differs really. Um, but obviously if you make it too small, that's not really uh, very efficient. And if you make it too large, it might not become very accurate. Um, yep. Oh, and then the other thing I wanted to mention is like a really power powerful thing with the idea of using a transformer is that the and I, I think they might mention it here somewhere or on a different paper but one of the problem of using traditional let's say like cnn based models for um, uh, training say for example an image classification uh, say for example you have a data set which contains a thousand classes and these classes uh, say for example you have like you know animals pictures so you know cats dogs etc now if you just need to add one more class type, say for example, you know, tomorrow you, you had like more data set of and contains a new animals and it's just one new animal, then you still have to retrain everything from the beginning because the training is more like an end to end, um, you know, training where you're not actually teaching the model to, um, to, to generalize or something like that. I don't know how to, to say it, but essentially, you know, the idea behind large large models or the um, fundamental models is essentially you train them on extreme with a very large data set that they start to see pattern just like for example with large language models where they start you know you give them like millions of books maybe or web pages wikipedia etc and they start to see the patterns in the language similarly here where um you know you could uh, train a model on a large number of images and then you start to employ the uh, transfer learning to just change your models fundamental well not fundamental just uh, train your model or fine-tune it on your goal quickly so in this I in this um, in this diagram here you can see that all you need to change later is for example you have like a new class is just change your head here, the the uh, MLP head, which I don't know why, why they call it MLP. I think it's, not, you know, I would personally call it feed forward network, where essentially you just change the head and then you don't need to retrain everything from the beginning because your model is now able to detect pattern among the images and you ju can just quickly teach it to adapt to new models. So, and that's obviously similar um, to the idea of BERT models. So I have an example that I showed earlier and you know I I didn't do much with this uh, example and I know I'm jumping now back to NLP but you know I'm gonna apply the same idea with computer vision. So you can see that uh, um, what I did here is I loaded the um, data set which is called the Amazon Polarity data set. It's essentially customer reviews so you can see you know just an example here, you know, uh, buyer beware, the worth. I see these are more negative examples and amazing, excellent. These are negative, sorry, positive uh, examples. And then what I did is that I took, I took this data set and then I took a BERT model 
and then I just literally run it for one epoch, no more than that, and I took just a maximum of thousand batches. I didn't even go through the whole data set. And then I trained the model, and then after that, I tried it, tried the accuracy on a test data set, um, and I already got like 92% accuracy, so that you, you could tell how powerful the model is, even though this is like, you know, four or five years old, the bird model. But because it was able to kind of like, it, it was trained on massive data set, then all you had to do is apply it, you know, apply a different head and then you know just do a, li a you know a little bit of fine tuning and then you're good to go so then i used it i gave it a statement and then it was able to tell me this is positive or i use a different statement here and was able to tell me it's negative so the same thing applies to the um when we go back to the transformer for vision you know this whole thing the transform is 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 pre-trained and then all you have to do is fine tune your model um yeah so i want to go to a demo now but i want to see uh, so i have a question about the multi-head attention um sure yeah i can i can quickly because it's it's so important um i can quickly go through through it um so the multi-head attention is like um this is from the transformer and essentially the idea is that you want to have um let's see if there's any example here so that's the multi-head attention in the paper um and i want to see whether there's any example i have here Yeah, but essentially the idea is that it's a dot product between a set of queries and keys. So for example, imagine in you know going back to the statement I mentioned earlier, I visit my friend at his place, then your ideal goal is to have the attention between his and my friend to be high, which means that they are related and you would want the dot product between these two tokens to be essentially closer to one than say for example at his and i because these are not related so that's how they achieve this i mean i i'm just going to be brief here because it's you know this is like a you know, big paper that deserve its own like full uh, full hour to talk through it but that's the idea essentially here where you have you know your queries and the keys and then you the output is more like you know the values you you, you want to get usually you know the uh, the value is more like um, if i recall correctly it becomes more like the um they equate the values i think with the w with the keys because you want to get the same thing like for example if you're doing um yeah i'm i'm kind of confused about this now i because because one of them usually is equal to the other one they equate them but i can't remember which one or which i it always confuse me but the idea is that it's more like you want to be able to search within imagine if you want to search um doing self self ascension uh, self attention in this case if you give your 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 query as my and then sorry if you give your query at his and then you apply it to the whole of the statement then you expect to get result low values from i and visited etc but you expect to to have high values you know when it comes to my friend because they are related so that's kind of like the attention mechanism where you allow the model to attend more to certain input than other input and then if you think about if we if we come back to the to the idea of uh, applying it to uh, computer vision, then you would hope that, for example, uh, I have an image here, um, like in this in this uh, you know two cats image, then the the model should be able to pay attention to to the different patches of the image more than others. So, for example, you know. Uh, the patches related to this cat should have more attention than the other cat because this is like the same cat this is a different cat and if you if you try to think about the model trying to detect that this is a cat then obviously it's gonna have to realize that you know the shape of the 
of the ear and the nose and the eyes this is kind of like how you know that the cat is a cat and similarly with like you know you would expect that the attention for the remote control here to be you know to attend more to the other patches than say to the cat for example because it's unrelated uh, so that's kind of like the idea of attention and it's kind of like what revolutionized N NLP and you know the transformer and nowadays it's it's also the uh, computer vision um, so yeah I want to show you an example that I did here and the idea is that I used oh by the way I want to mention that uh, I'm using um, the vision transformer from Hugging Face. I mean, Hugging Face is just becoming amazing these days. Like most of them, it's it's kind of like becoming a standard. When you have a good model, you kind of import it into Hugging Face so that it becomes easy to use it, and you don't have to actually build the model yourself. So you can see in this example here, I'm just taking the model, which is uh, pre-trained by Google and then moving it to the GPU and then what I'm doing here is I am loading you know different images that I have in my on, on you know on this notebook so I have two cat images and then I have three dogs so these are the images I have locally and then I essentially want to do a clustering so I want to give the models all these images and ask the model to cluster them you know each group each cluster having related images and then what I did is that I loaded the images here and then I gave it to the model um, and then what the model gave me is the, um, the it gives you like multiple options one of them is the last hidden state and which is if you recall in the paper uh, you know this this is the uh, this is the hidden state here which is the output of this kind of like talking they they intentionally add it's more like they consider it to be the the value of this whole thing kind of like try to take an embedding and they treat this output here as kind of like the overall representation of every single patch of all other patches and then they can apply the head here to do whatever they want with it so i'm taking i'm taking that uh, you know that head you know because you can see i'm using index zero the first one i think it's the batch because i have one image so it's, it's just one and then this one is like you know the number of patches the the first one being the the output and then essentially I'm treating this as the embedding of that picture and then I end up building a list of embeddings so this is going to be five embeddings one for each picture so I'm expecting that if I give this these embeddings you know which is essentially in, dim in, in dimensional space where n I think is seven, 700 or uh, 768 or something like that and then I'm giving these embeddings to a k-means clustering algorithm and I expect that it should correctly group the cat images together and then the dog images together because they are related so the model should be able to tell that these are in a certain group and these are another group and you could say that you know I gave it I gave it the the embeddings here moved to the CPU and then I gave it to k-means this is part of the SK learn and then after that I did the labels and then you could tell that it it was able to, to 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 know that these belong to the same group and then these three others belong to the other group um obviously you know this is clustering you could do um you could do more than that um so for example if you look at the page here from hugging face i think there is a like in this example where they load an image cat and then sorry a cat image and then they use the model again for uh, which is called VIT for image classification and then they apply the the model on the input to get the logits and then they you know they take the argmax which essentially is the most probable class and then they use the uh, they convert the idea back to label and they get like Egyptian cat um, yeah so um, so yeah that's kind of like what I wanted to go through today I, I I'll go through a question later but uh, one thing I will go I'll go through next week is I will show you how you can end up linking text and vision so essentially I want to be able to say 
like in this uh, in this example, let's say uh, this is like a white card. So in this in this example, I want to be able if I if I tell the model um, uh, the picture or you know sh show me the picture of the white cat, it should be able to to link this English statement to this cat, and that is. Um, that is called the um, multimodal, and one of the interesting model is the clip model from uh, OpenAI. Um, so how, that's how they connect text and images. You know, the, the idea is that basically we had like a couple of talks previously about transform application for NLP, and now we went through an application for computer vision, and then the question is, can we link them together? And well, obviously the answer is yes. It has been done. You know, uh, in uh, uh, like since two years maybe and now obviously with chat GPT-4 it's becoming more, way more powerful um, but uh, yeah I will go through this just as a motivation I hope you join the next uh, next session which I'm gonna talk through the I'm gonna walk you through the clip model and uh, I think that's kind of what I had in mind to go through um, yeah, I will see if there's any other question. Then, if I remember something else I wanted to share with you, I will mention it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a question here. Can you please explain in detail about the multi adaptation? I mean, I, I kind of briefly explained it. It's very hard to explain in detail. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm afraid. But I had I had a talk about it a couple of weeks back. I can share with you on Discord the um, uh, the 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 youtube video where i talked about the transformer so you can listen to it i'm hoping it, it you know it's going to be useful to explain the transformer paper in, you know in detail but you know the idea is that regardless of how it's implemented the idea is that you want to be able to give it two tokens and it tells you how much it thinks they are related um are there any known improvements with different attention flavors, linear transformer, conformal reformer? I'm not aware personally. Um, I know that in the related section, they uh, they talk about some interesting work, um, but I, d I don't know whether it, it's not the same thing. So they talk about, let's see, they talk about some of the work that uh, was done in related research trying to essentially apply a transformer and one of the things they mentioned is that uh, Parmer applied this rotation only in local neighborhood for each query so essentially instead of applying attention to every single other pixel they take the whole image but they apply it only locally so I don't know maybe uh, let's say for example uh, 10 pixels around each pixel and something like that and uh, um, and then there's also the sparse transformers, which it, it seems similar based on what I read. I haven't actually read the whole paper, but the idea is again is, is similar where you, you don't take the global self attention, you only take sparse attention, you know, as the name suggests. But I, you know, unfortunately, I can't actually, uh, you know, answer the question of, uh, you know, this one accurately because you know i don't have the full literature review about this topic but you could certainly read the paper and see the references that might help you um based on training set size do you know any of this any do you know of any studies looking into the performance based on training set size uh taking the data set and seeing how much they can cut from the data from classes before performance drops significantly um, again, I don't know, unfortunately. I know that, uh, I think in the same paper they did mention, um, I don't know whether they mentioned something about the training set data size. Oh no, that's a different thing. They mentioned the uh, the performance of, of it, uh, you know, with the, the network depth. Um, but yeah, no, unfortunately I don't know. I mean, I kind of like learned about this research recently, so. I'm not really expert about everything, every you know tiny detail about it. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna share the uh, I'm gonna you know uh, polish this notebook a little bit and share it just for just so you could maybe experiment with it. 
and um, but obviously you can go through the uh, hugging face page and you know take the examples here. So there's there's a couple of uh, blogs and notebooks that you could you could play with. Um, might be helpful, but uh, other than that, I will hopefully share the uh, notebook on my GitHub page. Um, so, is there any other question from the audience? Okay, I uh, think that's a no essentially, but uh, obviously if you have, oh I see someone writing, so I'll wait. But obviously if you have other questions, you know, and you know, feel free to reach out to me on the, uh, on Discord. Okay, uh, no, no questions, okay. Cool, all right, well, um, uh, uh, thank you everyone for your time. I hope you enjoyed this and make sure to come to next week's session about clip model because it's going to be interesting. I plan to show some, um, Kind of like you know a, a, a search you know an image search essentially where you have like set an image and you you say you know show me the image that contains maybe like you know a, a baby girl or a cat or something like that so yeah i hope to see you next week and have a good rest of weekend see you later bye